hello guys welcome to dtw tutorials welcome okay so today i'm so excited finally the jam 2018 physics past question video is finally out okay the complete 40 questions solved i've gotten so many mails whatsapp uh, messages and uh, messages on uh, comments on on uh, youtube asking for this video so this video is finally out and i'm so excited and all i need from you please is to just share 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 and share to your friends your colleague your loved ones preparing for the forthcoming jam 2019 exam i know the exams are just two weeks um away so please i need your support so please share please share and share on your facebook your whatsapp your twitter instagram just share okay and let this video reach a lot of students to help them in their exams all right and if it's your first time on this channel please try to click the subscribe button and also the notification bell so you get instantly notified when we upload an educational video for you okay so subscription is free there's no payment to it so just click the subscribe button to support this ministry to grow uh, my brothers and sisters please support this ministry all right okay and one more thing I need to emphasize please this video is not for sale please my Nigerian brothers and sisters please do not sell this video like some weeks back I think I saw on Facebook I saw the, the, this picture the thumbnail of one of my videos Videos completely solved I think the mass question on jam and someone using that video to invite people to a whatsapp group and uh, I don't know I think it's also monetizing the whatsapp group and also prom promoting exam practice saying um, um two days before your exams they will send answers to you why do you need such don't let anyone deceive you and I see on several Facebook uh, Facebook um, groups when someone just says and uh, put down your number for two days uh, two days before your exams and you get answers and i see a lot of students giving putting down their numbers why why do you need it you don't you don't need my practice say no to exam my practice please you can do it people do it with their head and they have just one head you too you also have one head and definitely dtw tutorials that's, that's why i make these sacrifices to make sure you have enough resources to prepare you for your forthcoming exams right now there is even a video on jam 2017 physics solved you can also watch that free and download okay download on your youtube app and watch offline instead of watching movies watching seasonal films download this thing on your youtube app i've made this completely free that's why i say here yeah, not for sale so you can download watch offline all right to enable you prepare well for your exam and i tell you if you watch these spread videos there are videos on um jam physics jam math 2017 2018 jam physics 2017 and, and, uh, and now this is jam physics 2018 if you watch those two videos which are one one hour plus i tell you 60 percent you are already prepared and you just need more extra work and you don't need to depend on any exam or practice and I tell, I'm telling you this from testimonies from students that have watched this video. They've watched the, that watched the video last year. That's 2018. Most of them have gotten admission into university. Lately, someone sent me a message. He got, um, he, he just matriculated into University of Calabar, and several other students just by watching this video. That's why I've taken out the pain and sacrifices to do this video for you. Yes, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, and I'm also working. So this is for the nigerian student the african student to make sure that they don't depend on exam and practice you don't need it don't listen to all those come and pay so so go to this website i'll give you the answers to this for you don't you don't need it and please you are the future of nigeria if you continue like this how, what as in what would the future hold as in what so please yes i know i'm talking too much on this matter but please say no to exam and practice yeah, is you know I'm not just saying no to exam and practice and not giving you anything. Go to the um, DTW YouTube channel. You will see over a hundred and eighty videos that will support you in your exam. So please, I beg you, say no. At least this is video you can watch. It's not like it's reading. You are reading, reading. You are not understanding. This is video you can replay, replay, replay. If you don't understand, send me a comment. All right. And also, um, there's also you can also reach me dtwtutorials.com. If you go to our blog, there's a section called forum. You can also ask academic questions there, and I will respond to you. And I'm also trying to gather teachers to uh, respond to all those various um, uh, subjects that I don't have. Um, 
that I don't have strength on. Okay? So please, I beg you, say no to exam my practice. And by the way, if you don't still have your jam syllabus, go to the DTW Tutorials blog. You can download your jam syllabus and all that thing. And also for the forthcoming post UME exams, if you check our DTW Tutorials channel, I've solved some questions on Unilag, OAU, UI, I think um, there's Unizik, there's um, Futo, there's Futa. And several more will come during the course of the year. Okay, because your post UME exam starts, I think, from August school starts calling um, um putting their form online for you to to purchase okay so please say no to what exam my practice all right and i believe that if you prepare hard for this exam and also pray and depend on god you are destined to win in this forthcoming jam 2019 exam as i have heard testimonies of people that wrote jam 2018 exam of how they've matriculated so also i'm also going to hear your testimony all right you listening to me i'm going to hear your testimony in jesus name i pray amen and don't forget jesus christ is coming soon give your life to christ you are destined to win all right so let's get on to the video now question one of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics it says a man walks one kilometer due east okay let's try to draw this diagram okay let's represent this all right uh that's uh this is like bearing okay so let's say the man is here we have x here all right so we have this so you remember this is not south this is west and this is what's east okay so a man walks one kilometer due east one kilometer east okay so this is one kilometer and then one kilometer due north okay let's say he stops here that's one kilometer let's draw this a cardinal point again and then one kilometer due north let's call this point y why we go north now so north this is north one kilometer again do you not one kilometer okay the question says his displacement is okay so what to find the displacement let's draw another cardinal point so this is his displacement from here to here all right so let's say this place is what z so his displacement is what x what x z so we are to find this displacement okay point is z so here we have a right angle triangle okay since we, we're going straight we, we went straight due north so this is a right angle triangle from here we have two sides equals an isosceles triangle so definitely these two base the angles will be equal okay so if this is 90 and you know the angles the sum of angles in a triangle must be equal to what 180 is that not it so this angle will be what 45 and this angle will also be what 45 so you have 45 plus 45 which is 90 and 90 plus this 90 here is what 180 okay so we resolve the angle so our question says find this displacement so we have to find this distance x y okay and to get x y remember pythagoras is that not it pythagoras using pythagoras we have x z square is equal to what will give us what x y square plus z y square okay so what is x y square that's one square plus what one square okay and which will give us what two that's one plus one two all right okay so we have x z square so to get x z is equal to the square root of what two okay so x z is what the square root of two so uh the question says and his what displacement so what is his displacement okay his displacement will be the square root of 2 and from here to here we have what displacement is what 45 degree not east what 45 degrees okay so we have 45 degrees not east from his starting point so we have what not east 45 degrees all right so this is our correct answer and our right option here is option a Question 2 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question, that's your jam 2018 physics exam. It says the density of 400 centimeter cube of palm oil was 0.9 gram per centimeter cube before frying. Okay, this is the first density and this is the first volume. Alright, if the density of the oil was 0.9 gram this should be a centimeter cube after frying, assuming no loss of oil due to spilling its new volume is okay what is its new volume all right its new volume is what all right remember what's the formula for finding density d is what mass over volume all right and the question says assuming no loss of oil due to spilling so our mass will be what the same okay so the mass will be the same 
before frying and also after what frying so we have here so d where mass will be what mass is equal to what d times what volume okay that's what dv so d1 v1 will be equal to what d2 what v2 that is the mass okay before frying will be equal to the mass after what frying so we have this so the question says find the new volume that's why looking for what v2 so making v2 subject of the formula here what are we going to have we will just divide both sides by what d2 okay so we have d1 v1 divided by what d2 okay so let's put in our value what is d1 our first density is what 0.9 times what what is v2 our first volume the density of this 400 centimeter cube which is our volume all right divided by and if the density of oil was 0. this after frying, so 0. 0.6. Okay, when you punch in your calculator, what are you going to get? When you punch in your calculator, these values, you are going to get what 600 what centimeter cube. Okay, so this is our answer, 600 centimeter cube. And our right option here is option B. Question 3 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question. That's your jam 2018 physics exam. It says, which of the following is true of an electric what charge? A says the positive charge means deficit electrons. B says what? Uh, negative charge means excess of electrons. C says what? Electric current means movement of what? Electrons. And D says all of the above. Okay, the right answer is what? All of the above. Because a positive charge will always give out what? Electrons, which means deficit of electrons. Negative charge always receives what? Electrons, which means excess of what? Electrons. And definitely, electric current means what? The movement of what? Electrons. So, all of the above. So, the right option here is option D. Question 4 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question, that's your jam 2018 physics exams. It says, natural radioactivity consists of the emission of, A says alpha particle and beta particles, B says alpha particles and x-rays, C says alpha particles, beta, uh, part, uh, beta rays and gamma rays, and D says your Y rays and what your X rays, okay? So what is the right option here? The right option here is option C, your alpha particles, your beta rays and your gamma rays, okay? These are the natural radioactivity emission, all right? So you have what alpha particles, your beta rays and gamma rays. Question 5 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question, that's your jam 2018 physics exam. It says, which of the following does not describe the image formed by a plane mirror? Okay, I hope you remember the images formed by a plane mirror. I hope you remember that. The first thing is what the image formed by a plane mirror is what virtual, that it cannot be captured on a screen. And the second one, the second one is that the image is the same distance behind the mirror as the object in front of the mirror. And the next thing is, the, the, the third one is that it's erect but laterally inverted. And the, the fourth one is that it's the same size as the what object. I hope you remember these four things. All right. So let's look at our answer here. The question says, which of the following does not describe, does not describe the image formed by a plane mirror of A, erect, which is what correct, laterally inverted, which is correct, same distance from the mirror as the object, which is correct, D says magnified, it is what wrong. So, a right option here is what magnified, because it is wrong, it is not what magnified, all right, it's the same size as the what object. Question 6 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question, that's your jam, 2018 physics exam, it says, what is the resultant resistance of the circuit given above okay this circuit we have to find the resultant resistance okay we have to simplify this circuit first all right so what's the first thing you need to do let us try to resolve these two um, uh, resistors here first so that we can now have a series what circuit okay so it's always better you start by resolving uh, the smaller portions okay you can just divide can just say okay let me first of all resolve this so i get one particular point here then resolve the remaining so in resolving this since these two are in parallel what do we have we have here one over r is equal to one over two plus what one over two so what do we have here we have okay what do we have here this two lcm so we have one plus one okay which is two over two all right so, and what's 2 over 2? That's 1. So, R is what? If you invert R, it's still what? 1. So, R is equal to what? 1. All right? So, from here, we are now left with what? This. 
okay where this is three this is four and this is what one so we can easily resolve this now this is a series circuit so all we need to do is say three plus one and plus four and what is three plus one that's four and four plus four is equal to what eight so we have what eight what ohms so this is our answer and our right option here is option a Question 7 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question. That's your jam 2018 physics exam. Question 7 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question. That's your jam 2018 physics exam. It says, which of the following best describes the energy changes which take place when a steam engine drives a generator which lights a lamp? Okay, so what are the en energy changes that take place during this process? First of all, you have here a steam engine. Then you have a generator that lights up what a lamp okay so what's the first thing how does how do you put on a steam engine okay you put on a steam engine by burning coal okay so it requires what heat all right because you burn coal up okay so when you burn this coal up there's going to be like a water if you read up on steam engine there's a water a water compartment so this um coal bonds heats up the water and water creates what steam okay so when you heat up water to a particular temperature it produces steam and this steam is being driven with high pressure through a pipe okay now since it says it drives a generator so it means that we have a turbine all right so there will be a turbine that's a a rotor like um equipment okay rotor like machine okay if you read up on steam engine you would uh, know what i'm talking about okay so this heat would what um produce steam and the steam on high pressure would would what move a turbine all right and that movement of a turbine that's what we call what kinetic energy is that not it kinetic energy so the next thing after heat the next energy change will what kinetic what energy okay now after the movement the movement of the rotor in this generator it will produce produces what electricity so the next thing after the movement of um, the rotor we have what electricity it is the next energy change okay then after it produces electricity definitely it would light up what a lamp okay and uh, when you you have a, a, a lamp being lighted up what would happen the, that same lamp would also what produce what heat so we also have what heat and light okay so we have the final result as what light so definitely the answer here is option this particular option which is option c that's made from heat to kinetic energy to electricity then we have what heat and light other option says heat yes heat is correct that's the first thing but it can't produce light immediately no it has to what move a rotor all right and that rotor would produce electricity okay and the, the next one after light says sound no there's nothing about sound here all right the first b says um, this option says uh kinetic energy to heat no the first step here is what steam engine so you have to put on the steam engine which requires what heat so it can never be what kinetic energy the next option says electricity no you electricity don't just occur like that you have to first heat up the steam engine then which drives the generator to produce what your light in your bulb or your lamp all right so the right option here is option c which is what heat to kinetic to electricity and towards heat and light. Question 8 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question. That's your jam 2018 exams. Okay, it says cathode rays are A, high energy electromagnetic waves, B, protons, C, neutrons, D, streams of electrons. Okay, the right option here is option D because cathode rays are what streams of electrons emitted from the cathode of a high vacuum tube okay so cathode rays are what streams of electrons emitted from a high vacuum tube and some of the properties of cathode rays is that it's what it moves in straight line it causes fluorescence and also possesses a negative charge and another thing is that it can produce x-rays if they are what of high energy so our right option here is option question 9 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that is your jam 2018 exams it, it says a narrow beam of white light can be splitted splitted up this should be splitted up into different colors by a glass prism the correct explanation is that okay so a says white light is an electromagnetic wave uh, b says the prism has all the colors of white light no okay 
and this is also no c says different colors of white light travel with what different speed in glass okay so this is correct d says white light has undergone total internal reflection in the prism okay no this is what's wrong okay i hope we remember white light and when we're talking of white light white light is a mixture of several colors and i hope we remember our roy beef okay that's roy g b i v where red arrow is for what red o is for orange y is for what orange g is for green b is for blue i is for what indigo and v is for violet okay so definitely when white light is incident on a triangular glass prism what happens is what is refracted through the prism okay and the various components of light travels at what different speed in the glass and are refracted along different parts where red light red light is what is the least what deviated okay and it has the highest speed all right so let's say you have a glass prism here all right and you have white light coming here you have one here let's say you have another light so and you have a screen here the least deviated of the color is what red why the most deviated is what violet okay why is red the least deviated is because what it has the what fastest speed okay the speed is what very high okay high speed and violet is what has the lowest what speed okay okay so that's why option c is correct because different colors of white light travel with what different speed in what glass all right remember this is white light coming in here okay through the triangular glass prism and it is what refracted all right and we have red as what the least what deviated why violet is the most what deviated all right so so option c is the right answer question 10 of the utme 2018 physics first question that's your jam 2018 physics exam it says figure 2 represents a block and tackle police system on which an effort of w newtons supports a load of 120 newton okay and if the efficiency of the machine is 40 percent this should be 40 percent then the value of w is that's we're looking for our effort all right so the question we have to get our effort we've been told um the load and we've been given efficiency of um, this system okay all right and remember what's the formula for finding the efficiency of a machine this efficiency of machine is equal to what your mechanical advantage over what your velocity ratio times 100 okay just keep that formula here and what is your mechanical advantage i hope you remember the formula for finding the mechanical advantage is what load over effort all right okay and what is uh, the formula for getting your vr that's your velocity ratio our normal formula for getting the velocity ratio is what the distance moved by effort okay distance moved by effort over distance moved by what load okay but here this is a block and tackle pulley system so the velocity ratio is the number of what pulleys okay of the system all right and how many pulleys do we have here we have one two three four five six so the velocity ratio of this system is what is what six okay so we have six as the velocity ratio all right so from here we can find our load okay we're looking for the effort okay so uh, from here now you have to apply maths here and what you majorly apply uh, the, the part of math you apply to this question is change of subject of the formula now you have your vr and you have your e from here let us tell okay let us state what we have our vr is what six that's the number of pulleys and we have our load here our load is what 120 newtons and we have our efficiency here as what 40 what percent okay that's the efficiency of this what efficiency of this system all right so if we have all this definitely we can try to get our mechanical advantage because the formula for getting our mechanical advantage is what load over over what effort and effort we don't know that is what we are looking for 
all right we don't know effort all right so we're looking for w which is equal to our what effort all right so we can't apply any uh we can't um, since if effort is unknown we don't know the mechanical advantage but from here we can get the mechanical advantage why because we know the efficiency of the system and we know the velocity ratio okay so our only unknown here is what the mechanical advantage okay so making the mechanical advantage is the subject of formula here what do we do we multiply this uh, both sides by v r then divide by 100 i hope you for, i hope you remember okay but just follow me closely the first thing we do we multiply so we have v r that's our velocity ratio times what efficiency of the system equal to what a mechanical advantage times 100 the next thing we divide both sides by 100 all right we're trying to make what m a our mechanical advantage the subject of formula so we have what m a is equal to v r times what e over 100 and what is v r here v r is what six which is this times what's our efficiency here we have what 40 divided by 100 equal to our mechanical advantage and this will cancel out this this and also two here how many times two here we'll go here two times and two here we'll go here five times so we're left with what the six times two that is what 12 over five okay so our mechanical advantage is what 12 over five okay so the next thing we do now is to get our effort since we know our mechanical advantage as 12 over five all right and our, our load is what 120 so all we need to do is from here, make effort the subject of the formula. In making effort the subject of the formula, all we need to do is bring effort up here and take MA down. So we have our effort is equal to what? Load over mechanical advantage. And what is our load? Our load is what? 120. And our mechanical advantage, we've gotten it here as what? 12 over 5. Definitely, we have to invert, okay? Since we're dividing, we have to take 5 up, all right? So what are we left with? We're left with what? 120 times 5 over 12, all right? So how here, what can go? 12 can go here, 1, and 12 in 120 will go how many times? 10 times. So we're left with 10 times 5. And what is 10 times 5? That is what? 50. And, well, this is effort, so 50 what? newtons okay so our right answer is what 50 newtons and our right option here is option d question 11 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics exams it says what type of reaction is represented by the following scheme okay so you have two nuclei here okay two here two here one here one here and we have a nuclei and we have a neutron and we have energy okay so anytime you see energy being given out and neutron and you have a neutron it is what a fusion reaction okay so in a fusion reaction what we energy is produced and also a neutron is what produced okay so the right option here is option a. Question 12 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question. That's your jam 2018 physics exam. It says the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of 10 kg of copper by 1 Kelvin is it A says specific heat capacity, B says latent heat, C says heat capacity, D says internal energy i know most people will just go quickly and just click specific heat capacity no it is not the right option here is what option c heat capacity now you must know the difference between specific heat capacity and heat capacity now what is specific heat capacity specific heat capacity is the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of a unit mass that is just one kg of copper a unit a unit mass okay one kg of copper through a one kelvin increase in temperature why heat capacity is the quantity of heat needed to raise the temperature of the entire substance that's why it says 10 kg of copper so the entire amount of copper by what one kelvin okay so do you understand do you get now so don't be confused specific means what just one kg of that substance why heat capacity is the entire what substance all right so our right option is what option c question 13 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics exam it says the electrochemical equivalent of silver is this 0.0012 okay 
If 36 gram of silver is to be deposited by electrolysis on a surface by passing a steady current of 5 minutes, the current must be... Okay, so we are to find the current here, alright? That's what we are to find, current, which is what? I, alright? Okay, and I hope you remember electrolysis and uh, Faraday's law. I hope you remember, we state that what? That the mass of a given element liberated during the process of electrolysis is what? Directly proportional to what? The quantity of electricity that passed during what? Electrolysis. Okay, so M is what? Directly proportional to what? Q. And where M is equal to what? Z, I, T. What is Z? Z is what? The electrochemical what? Equivalent. All right? Z is represented as the electrochemical equivalent. I is for our current and T is for what? Our time. All right? So, we are definitely looking for what? I. All right? Is that not it? All right? And don't forget that Q is equal to what? IT. And Z is the constant which we introduce to change this variation sign to an equal to sign. That's why M is equal to what? Z, I, T. So here we are looking for what? Our I. So let's make I the subject of formula. Making I the subject of formula, we divide both sides by what? Z, T. Okay, so I is equal to what? M over Z, T. It's always important that you know the change of subject of formula all right you can also check our channel dtw tutorials there's a video that has explained change of subject of formula and also past questions solved all right it's going to help you in calculations it's very key you will use it even up to your final year university if you're an engineering student um because you're going to be going to you're going to be doing a lot of maths and calculation and that topic is a foundation that you need you must not miss it so we have what here i is equal to m over z t so what is m our m is what 36 grams divided by z is what 0 0.0012 times what is our time here our time is what five minutes we have to convert five minutes to what seconds so in converting we have what five times 60 all right if you punch in your calculator all these values you're going to get what 100 all right so our current is what 100 watt amps and our right option here is option b question 14 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics exam it says shadows and eclipse result from d a says refraction of light no b says reflection of light no c says diffraction of light no and, and d says what rectilinear propagation of what light and what does this mean Rectilinear just means what straight, okay? So this is what light traveling what on a what straight line, all right? So the formation of shadows and eclipse are what are the two natural uh, phenomenon that shows that light travels in a what straight line. I'm sure in school, in school there's a particular exper experiment you do. You have you know several cardboards and you have holes and you pass a a like a thread through those holes. You put a candle light at the at the other end of the card cardboard being placed and you notice that when you move one of the cardboards you see that you can't see the line okay so it means that what light travels in a straight line and shadows and eclipse are two natural phenomenon that shows that light travels in a straight line so our right option here is option d question 15 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 exam it says which of the following obeys ohm's law okay um the first option say all metals option b says diode diode only diode or semiconductors okay they are also semiconductors they are semiconductors okay and uh, c says all electrolytes and d says what glass okay um diodes don't uh, follow ohm's law and first of all what is ohm's law you know ohm's law um states that the current through a conductor is what is directly proportional to the voltage across what the conductor that is v is what's directly proportional to what i that's the current okay and um you know this this particular relationship is a linear what relationship okay because it's what directly proportional is linear it's not um an inverse um relationship okay so anything any of these um, particular um materials must what follow ohm's law by what v is what directly proportional towards the current so for semiconductors it, uh, it doesn't follow ohm's law electrolytes 
it doesn't follow Ohm's law and for and for glass glass is silica it doesn't conduct electricity so it doesn't follow Ohm's law but our right option here is what option A which is what all metals all right which follows what Ohm's law that what V is directly proportional to what your current so our right option here is option A Question 16 of the UTME 2018 physics past question, that's your jam 2018 physics exam. It says, which of the following statements are true of what isotopes? Okay, I hope you remember what an isotope is and the properties of isotope. Okay, if you don't remember, uh, let me just give you the, the properties of isotope. Of isotopes. Now, the, norm, the first property is that isotopes have the same what? Number of what? Protons. Okay, and the second is that what? They have the same what chemical properties okay isotopes of an element of different elements have the same what chemical properties all right and the third one is that they have what different what physical properties all right they have different physical properties such as your boiling point and your melting point okay so let's get back to the question um i says what isotopes of an element the question says which of the following statements are true of isotopes now the first one says isotopes of an element have the same chemical properties because they have the same number of electrons no the second point says isotopes of elements are normally separated using physical properties yes and the top point says what well, isotope of an element have the same number of protons in their nuclei yes so this is the two correct statements and our right option here should be option c which is what i2 and ii3 okay so our right option is option c question 17 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that is your jam 2018 physics exam it says in the diagram above the hanging mass m2 is adjusted until m1 is on the verge of sliding the coefficient of static friction between m1 and the table is okay so we're looking for the coefficient of static friction between m1 and the table okay remember what's the formula for finding the coefficient of static friction is a frictional force over what your normal reaction which is what r okay this is frictional force all right and r is what normal reaction Okay, remember, normal reaction is equal to what? Mg, all right? That's your mass times your gravitational what? force. All right, okay, so let's just have this here. We're going to come back to this. Okay, so the next thing now, we have to resolve the forces here. Okay, so here we have tension on the, on, the, on the string here, and we also have another tension on the string here. In resolving the forces acting on M1, we have a frictional force, which what opposes what motion, okay which is what f here so we have a t here this is tension okay so f opposes what the force acting on the tension acting on this what on this spring okay and another force we have here is what your normal reaction arrow and your weight here all right where weight is equal to what m one g and remember that what your normal this force here is equal to this force here so what so we have r is equal to what m1 g all right and we also have here f is equal to what t okay so t is equal to what f and where f is what you remember from this formula our fictional force will be what f will be what mu r that's making f subject of formula so f is what mu r and where r that's the normal reaction acting on this mass m1 is what that is what m1 g so f that's the first tension here is equal to what mu m1 g okay so let us resolve the force acting here that's the, there's a tension on the spring here and we have a weight acting here so these two forces are equal and what is the weight acting here this would be what m2 g so t is equal to what m2 g this is equation one so t equal to what m 2 g equation what two okay the question says find the coefficient of static friction that is what mu so we equate equation one and two so we have what mu m 1 g is equal to what m 2 g okay so from here g can cancel out g is that not not it 
okay well, and we are left with what mu m1 equal to what m2 making mu the subject of formula we divide both sides by what m1 okay so we have mu is equal to what m2 over m1 so a coefficient of static so a coefficient of static friction is what m2 over m1 that's mass the second mass over the first mass and our right option here is option c question 18 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics exam it it says which of the following may be used to explain a mirage okay so before we uh, get get into uh, checking the option what is a mirage okay you know is that um, pool of water you see on the road let's say you are traveling okay on a far journey and it's quite hot um it's quite as in a far journey on a very very hot day and you see in front of you let's say some uh, kilometers ahead you see a pool of water you think it's water but when you approach there you don't see anything on the road again okay so that's a mirage so what happens is that you know our brain eyes connected to our brain so our brain thinks that what light travels in a straight line but in this instant okay since the road is quite hot okay so the heat from the surface of the road heats up the cool air let's say um you have some air here so it heats up the cool air here and this air here becomes what hot and up upper you have what cool air okay cool air here and here is hot air so when light travels what happens light will travel when it comes here from a hot from a cool air and goes to a hotter region a hot air region there's what it refracts so the light would what bend all right so you have what we call total internal reflection happening here so the light bends but our eyes will still see it as was a straight line okay so that's why our brain would think that uh, this light is probably coming from the surface of the road all right so that's what happens Oh, that's why you see a pool of water on the road okay it's just that uh, light travels from a cool air to a hot hotter hotter um, region of air and you 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 can see that the light bends but our eyes still sees it as what a straight line if you stand in here okay you will see it as what a straight line but it bends and you have this reflection of a pool on the surface of the road all right so now let's go to our question okay our question the option says that's for your eye it says layers of air near the surface of the road have varying refractive index indices in hot weather okay so this is correct okay this can be used to explain mirage because layers of air near the road surface have varying refractive indices in hot weather okay because since um the, since the weather is hot it heats up hot air um, so cool air here so you have hot air and cool air on top okay then option i2 says road surfaces sometimes become good reflectors in hot weather okay no okay road surfaces are not good reflectors is what actually makes this um the light to bend okay is the, the layer of what hot air which has a what a low refractive what index all right so this is wrong now the next thing the iii says light from the sky can be reflected upwards after coming close to the road okay so after coming close to what the road surface so and the road surface would which is what quite what hot all right so i3 is also right so here our right option here is option a that is i and i i i only all right so we have option i and i i i as our answer Question 20 of the UTME 2018 physics past questions, that's your jam 2018 physics. It says which of the following has the lowest internal resistance when new? Okay, option A says the A says Leclanche cell, B says Daniel cell, C say a touch battery, and D says accumulator. Okay. The correct answer here is D, which says accumulator, okay? And accumulators, they are secondary cell, okay. This uh Le Clanche cell and Daniel cell, uh, cell and the touch battery, they are primary cells, okay? Why um, your accumulator or, or your lead acid cells are secondary cells, okay? Secondary cells offers 
the lowest internal resistance all right you know um the internal resistance of a cell depends on some factors like uh the life of the cell and the electrolyte use and the electrolyte use in an accumulator is what your lead um acid okay and lead acids offer low internal resistance all right and which they since they offer low internal resistance they deliver high current on demand okay so your secondary cells all right i hope you still remember your types of primary cell your daniel cell uh, Le Clanche cell and your torch factory, they are primary cells which cannot be charged. Okay, for your secondary cells like your lead cell and your accumulator, they can be what recharged. All right, so your the correct answer here is what D. Question 21 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question. That's your jam 2018 physics. It says the pitch of an acoustic device can be increased by. A says decreasing the loud, loudness, no. B says increasing the amplitude, no. C says yes, increasing the frequency. This is the correct answer. D says in decreasing the intensity, no. It is what? Increasing the frequency. I hope you know the characteristics of uh, a musical note. Uh, uh, and the, the three characteristics of a musical note is what? The pitch, the quality, and the loudness, all right? And the pitch of a note depends on the frequency of the sound wave, okay? So the pitch becomes higher as frequency increases. That's why you see a guitar string. If the string is quite tight and you, you just play a note on that the frequency will be quite high so the pitch of an acoustic device can be increased by increasing what the frequency so this is a right answer option c question 22 of the utme 2018 physics past question that's your jam 2018 physics it says one of the features of the fission process is that a it leads to a chain reaction okay this is our right answer but let's re read through the the option b says it's products are not reductive no neutrons are not released no the sum of the masses of uh the reactants equals the sum of the masses of a product no so one of the features of a fission process is that it leads to what a chain reaction okay so you know during the fission process the newly emitted uh, neutrons could split more of the uranium nuclei okay and that split could uh, set up a chain reaction which results to the release of large amount of energy okay so one of the features of the fission process is that it leads to what a chain reaction so a is our right what answer Question 23 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question. That's your jam 2018 physics. It says the linear expansivity of brass is this. All right. I think this is 10 raised to the power minus what 5. This is 5 here. Okay. If the volume of a piece of brass is 15 centimeter cube at 0 degree uh, Celsius, what is the volume at 100 degree Celsius? Okay. So we have to look for what? the volume all right and this is this if you notice here we're giving the linear expanse uh, expansivity and we're speaking on volume here all right so we have to relate linear expansivity to volume or cubic expansivity all right and what is the relationship between um cubic or volume expansivity to really uh, to linear expansivity it's what that's your volume expansivity which is indicated as this is what three times your what linear expansivity i hope you remember the symbol uh that represents linear expansivity which is what this symbol here okay so the relationship between volume expansivity and linear expansivity is expansivity is this which is what uh, volume expansivity is what three times that of what your linear expansivity and what's the formula for finding the volume expansivity okay it is what your v2 minus what v1 which v2 that's the final volume and v1 is what the initial volume divided by what v1 and theta where theta is what your temperature all right so from here we know that since we are not given this uh, the volume expansivity but we're giving linear expansivity expansivity so this will be what three times your linear expansivity all right so we have here three times what two times 10 raised to the power minus what five equal to what is v2 we don't know v2 okay it's v2 we're looking for because the question says what is the volume at what 100 degrees celsius we're told the volume at what zero degrees celsius which is what 15 centimeter cube okay so v2 is what our unknown which is our final volume okay so minus what is v1 v1 is what 15 then divided by 
15 times what? What is our, our, our temperature? Okay, our temperature is what? That's 100. Okay, times 100. All right, so let's cross multiply here. That not is 15 times this will give us what? 1,500. So we have 3 times times 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times what? 1,500 equal to V2 minus what? 15. Okay, when we punch in our calculator, if we multiply all this together, we are going to get what? 0 0.09 equal to V2 or VF, that's V final minus what? 15. So here, making the V2 the subject of formula, we take minus 15 to this side, we have what? 0 0.09 plus what? 15. And which is give us what v2 so here v2 is equal to 15 plus this will give us what 15.09 centimeter cube so this is our answer that's our final volume and our right option here is option b question 24 of the utme 2018 physics past question that's your jam 2018 physics it says a lead bullet of mass 0.05 kg kilogram is fired with a velocity of what 200 watt meter per second into a lead block of mass 0.95 kg given that the lead block can move freely the final kinetic energy after impact is okay so two things we have to look for here all right uh first of all we have to find the velocity okay that's the final velocity then after getting the final velocity that's when we can now get what our final kinetic energy after impact and remember all the formula to get our, our kinetic energy that's what half mv square okay that's the, to get v first which is what our final velocity okay and if you look closely to this question you know the question relates to the law of conservation of what momentum okay which states that if two or more bodies you know collide in a closed system you know what's a closed system a closed system is a system that no external force is acting on that system okay so if two or more bodies collide in a closed system the total momentum before collision is equal to the total momentum after what collision okay which is what m1 and our initial m1 multiplied by our initial what velocity plus what m2 multiplied by the initial velocity of what m2 then equal to this is the momentum before collision which will be equal to the momentum after collision so it will be what m1 v1 plus what m2 v2 so the velocity of what m m what m1 okay so but here i know in the law of con uh, conservation of momentum um when it when we talk of collision there can be an elastic collision and what inelastic collision okay an elastic collision is the one that um like okay let's say the, you fire a bullet and it hits a wall and comes back all right but here if you see this question um it says the lead b b bullet is fired into a lead block okay given that the lead block can move free, uh, freely so it means that as the bullet was being fired it entered the lead block okay okay let me let me draw this okay the bullet being fired let's say this is the bullet and this is the block okay so it entered the lead block all right and it moved with the lead block so this is the bullet in the lead block, okay and it moved with the lead block okay so this is what an inelastic what collision all right elastic collision is when it hits maybe a metal surface and bounces back but, but this is what an inelastic what uh, collision okay so it entered the lead block and both of them moved with a velocities which is the final velocity that we have to what get first before we can get our kinetic what energy all right so it means that the final velocity after impact okay would be the same all right so we have here m1 u1 plus what m2 u2 which is our initial velocity will be equal to what m1 plus m2 bracket what v since they what collided all right they are together and they moved along with the same velocity so v will be the same not different okay you apply this when it's an what elastic what collision all right that's the bullet bounces back you know when uh when you when the, the bullet will be fired let's say to a metal wall okay the metal the metal might move a bit 
or, or still remain there and the bullet would move so you can see that's different what velocities all right that different final velocities but here in this case the bullet was shot into the lead block and both of them move together so they have just one velocity all right stay closely with me all right okay and if you still don't understand try to go back to the law of conservation of momentum to understand this question better all right okay so we're going to apply this formula here so from here m1 what is m1 m1 is what that's the bullet uh, bullet mass is what 0 0.015 and what is u1 okay u1 is what 200 what meters per second that's fired with the velocity and what is m2 m2 is what the block of mass that's the lead block of mass which is what 0.95 and what is u2 that's the initial velocity of this block of mass it was station it was stationary so uh, in a, uh, initial velocity be what zero all right so from here we can put in our values into here so what is m let's draw down here so this we are going to have 0 0.05 times what is u1 that's your initial velocity which is what 200 plus m2 what's m2 sorry here m2 is 0 0.95 times u2 which is the in initial velocity was zero equal to m1 plus m2 which was m1 0 0.05 plus 0 0.95 bracket was v we're looking for our final velocity v is unknown okay so from here this times this what would this give us this times this will give us what 10 and this is what this times the uh, 0 0.95 times 0 will give us what 0 so plus 0 equal to this plus this will give us 1 and 1 times v is still is v all right so here we have what and 1 times v <clears throat> and 1 times v is still what v all right so here we have 10 plus 0 is what 10 equal to what 1 times this is what v so v is equal to what 10 meter per second all right so v is what 10 meter per what second okay so we've gotten our final velocity therefore we have to get our kinetic uh, kinetic what energy i'm putting this into this equation uh formula here we have one over two times what is the mass so our mass now will be what you know the mass of the bullet and also what the lead block as they move together so it will be 0 0.95 plus what 0 0.05 and what would that give us 0 0.95 plus 0 0.05 bracket and v is what 10 okay so times 10 what let's power 2 that's 10 square so we have 1 over 2 this plus this will give us what 1 times 1 times what what is 10 square 10 square is what 100 all right and 2 here 1 2 in 100 will give us what 50 so our answer is what 50 joules okay so the final kinetic energy after impact is what 50 joules and our right option here is option c question 25 of the utme 2018 physics past question that's your jam 2018 physics exam it's it says in a series rlc circuit at resonance the voltages across the resistor and inductor are 30 volts and 40 volts respectively what is the voltage across the capacitor okay so when you see rlc this is your resistor your resistance this is inductor and this is what your capacitor okay that's your resistor inductor capacitor okay and when you see a when, when the question asks you a series rlc circuit at resonance for a series uh, rlc circuit to be at resonance your inductive reactance which is what xl must be equal to your capacitive what um, reactance okay which is what xc and, re and remember that what vl is equal to what i x l and v c is equal to what i x what c okay the current is the same all right so the question asks us here that what is the voltage across the capacitor in a series of uh, in a series uh, r l c circuit at resonance okay so at resonance your inductive reactance is equal to your inductive capacitance so it means that the voltage and we've been given the voltage of the inductor as what 40 so it means that the voltage of the inductor will be equal to that of what the capacitor and you can see here if we say this vl vl equal to what vc this will be what i x l equal to what i x c okay so this will cancel out this so you still have what 
your inductive reactance equating what your capacitive what reactance so vl will be equal to vc so definitely the voltage across the capacitor will be the same as the voltage across the conductor which is what 40 v and our right option here is option d question 26 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics exam it says if the fraction of the atoms of a radioactive material left after 20 years is 1 over 64 what is the half-life of the material okay remember the formula for half-life half-life is equal to what the total time which is 120 years total time over the stages that's the stages of radioactive what decay okay so we've been told that uh, the fraction of atoms of radio radioactive material left after 120 years is what? 1 over 64. So we have to find the stages before it got to 1 over 64. Okay, so let's say it, start, it started from 1. Okay, from 1 you have, you, you have what? 1 over 2. This is the first stage. The second stage will be 1 over 4. The third stage will be 1 over what? 8. The fifth, the fourth stage, I mean, will be 1 over 16. The fifth stage will be what? 1 over 32. And the sixth stage will be what? 1 over 64. So we have how many stages here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our, our formula says what? Total time over the stages. Okay, so and what's the total time? That is 120 divided by 6. And 6 here, 1. 6 will go in 12. How many times? 2 times. So we are left with what? 20 okay so it's the answer <clears throat> so our answer is what 20 years and our right option here is option a question 27 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics it says in the diagram above which of the simple pendula will resonate with p okay where is p this is p okay when set into oscillation okay so which of this pendula will resonate with what p definitely your answer would be the same what length as what p the pendula with the same length as p okay will resonate with with what with what p okay so you, we have to check now what is the pendula with the same length with p it is what t okay so t has the same length with what p so it will what resonate what together with p when set in what oscillation all right so our right answer here is option b question 28 of the utme 2018 physics past question that's your jam 2018 physics it says the time rate of loss of heat by a body is proportional to the a says temperature of the surroundings b says temperature of the body c says the difference in the temperature between the body and its surrounding okay d says the ratio of temperature of the body to that of the surrounding no the right answer is what the difference in the temperature between the body and its surrounding okay so, so this will determine the time rate of loss of heat by the what body okay so the difference in the temperature of the body and its surrounding option c question 29 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics it says a positively charged rod x is brought near an uncharged metal fair y okay so we have a metal fair here y all right a rod which is positively charged is brought to it okay it's supposed to be close to it all right positively charged okay and is then touched by a finger with x still in place okay so this is y this is x okay so a finger is touched with x still in place so let's say this is a finger here okay when the finger is removed the result is that y has okay so y what charge would y get okay you remember in electrostatics when you bring a positively charged rod close to a a, a particular fair okay it's going to carry what a negative charge all right it's going to be what negatively what charge all right so what's the, what are our options the first option says no charge and a zero potential b says a positive charge and a zero potential c says a negative charge and a positive potential d says what a negative charge 
and a negative potential. So our right option here is option D. A negative charge and a negative what potential all right question 30 of the utme 2018 physics past question that's your jam 2018 physics it says electrical appliances in homes are normally earth so that a says a person touching the appliances is safe from electric shock b both the ac and dc sources can be used c the appliances are maintained at a higher pd than the earth D, the appliances are maintained at a lower PD than the earth. Okay, the right option here is option A. It is electric appliances in homes are normally earth so that what a person touching appliances is safe from electric what shock. So our right option here is option A. Question 31 of the UTME 2018 physics past question. That's your jam. 2018 physics. It says the process whereby a liquid turns spontaneously into vapor is called A says relegation. No. B says evaporation. Yes. C says boiling. No. D says sublimation. No. So our right option here is what? Evaporation. Question 32 of the UTME 2018 physics past question. That's your jam 2018 physics. It says, which of the following diagrams represent correctly an NPN transistor? Okay, so it says this, B says this, D says this, C says this. Okay, for an NPN transistor, okay, the base emitter is what? Forward what? Biased, all right? The base emitter junction is what? Forward biased. So current comes in through here, all right? And we have the arrow here, which means what the base emitter junction is what forward biased. All right, so our right option here is option C. Question 33 of the UTME 2018 physics past question. That's your jam. 2018 physics. It says the difference is observed in solid, liquid, and gases may be accounted for by A says the relative masses. No. B says their melting points. No. C says the spacing and forces acting between the molecules, which is our right answer. Option C is our right answer. D says the different molecules in each of them. No. The answer is what? The spacing and forces acting between the molecules. If you remember the atomic structure, okay, of li solid, liquid, and gases, and you would understand this, all right? The spacing and forces acting between the molecules uh, will let us know the differences between the sol be between a solid, liquid, and a gas. Question 34 of the UTME 2018 physics past question. That's your jam 2018 physics. It says convex mirrors are used as driving mirrors because images formed are okay. I hope we remember. The image is formed by a convex mir uh, mirror. Okay, do you remember? You know, a convex mirror, the image is always erect. The image is smaller than the object and the image is virtual. No matter where the object is placed, whether it's behind the mirror or in front of the mirror, the image is always what? Virtual. Okay, so what is our right option here? Our right option will be what? A says erect, which is correct. Virtual, yes. And diminish, yes. Okay, it diminishes because it's always smaller than the object b says erect real no it is not real and diminishes this so this is my answer c says erect virtual and magnified no d says inverted virtual and diminished no so our right option here is what option a which is what erect virtual and diminish question 35 of the utme 2018 physics past question that's your jam 2018 physics exam it says musical instruments playing the same notes Okay, so different musical instruments playing the same notes can be distinguished from one another owing, owing to the differences in their A says quality, B says pitch, uh, C says intensity, D says loudness. Okay, the right option here is what quality. Okay, so even if they, they are playing on the same notes, all right, the quality will what, differentiate it from another musical instrument instrument i hope you remember what uh, the quality of a note is note is you know the quality of a note is that characteristics that distinguishes uh distinguishes it from another note of a musical instrument playing at the same pitch and the same loudness okay so different notes different uh, the same notes playing at the same pitch and the same loudness on another musical instrument quality is different from the same notes at the same pitch and same loudness playing on another type of musical instrument so quality is the right option here
Question 36 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question says, in the diagram above, if the south poles of two magnets stroke a steel bar, the polarities at T and V will respectively be A says north and south, B says south and south, C says north and north, and D says what? North, uh, south and north, okay? So definitely the answer will be what? North and north, all right? So this will be what? North and this will be what not, all right? So our answer, the polarities are T and V will be what not and what not, all right? So our right option here is option C. Question 37 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question. That is your jam 2018 physics exams. It says in homes, electrical appliances and lamps are connected in parallel because A, less current will be used, B, less voltage will be used, C, parallel connection does not heat up wires, D, series connection uses up what high voltage, all right? You remember in your, in your parallel connection, you have what? Uh, the same volt, this current, as current comes in, the current will split up, okay? Let's say this is uh, above, this is above, this is above, and this is what above. But the same voltage will what pass through, eh? The, you, you are going to have the same 20 volts here, 20 volts here, 20 volts here. That's why you use parallel connection in what? Your home. So, but for a series connection, you just have, you know, like this, like this, like this. And each of these uh, lamps will consume or electrical appliances will consume different what voltages, all right, which can be high, all right. So the right option here is option D because in a series connection, series connection uses up what high voltage. But for here, parallel connection, connection, you can see the same voltage passes through each of the bulbs. So our right option is option D. Question 38 of the UTME 2018 physics pass question, that's your jam 2018 physics exam. It says an object moves in a circular path of radius 0.5 meter with a speed of 1 meter per second. What is its angular velocity? Remember the formula for finding angular velocity when you're given the radius and speed. Angular velocity is equal to what? Your velocity over your radius. And here, what do we have? Our velocity is what? 1 and our radius is what 0.5 okay so in dividing this let's move this uh, decimal place one place and add a zero here so we have what 10 over 5 so 5 in 10 will go how many times two times so our answer is what two radians per second all right and our right option here is option d question 39 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics exam is what effort will a machine of efficiency 90% apply to lift the load of what 120N if its effort arm is twice as long as its what load arm? Okay, so let us state what we have here. First of all, what's the formula for finding the efficiency of a machine? E is equal to what your mechanical advantage over your velocity ratio times what? 100. I remember what is the formula for finding your mechanical advantage? It is what? Your load over effort. Okay? And what is your velocity ratio? Velocity ratio, the formula for finding your the velocity ratio is what? Your distance moved, VR is equal to what? Distance moved by effort over distance moved by load, okay? So from this question here, to get our velocity ratio, it says if its effort arm is twice as long as its load arm, okay? So twice as long. So it means effort is what? Uh, two times what? The load arm. So 2L divided by load. That's effort is what? Two times. Let's say this is the load arm, okay? So 2L divided by L, where L will cancel L, our velocity ratio will be what? Equal to what? 2. Now the question, what does the question ask us to find? The effort, sorry, the effort, okay? And to get the effort, we need to know our mechanical advantage, all right? So from here, as since we know our efficiency and we know our velocity ratio, let us make MA, that's our mechanical advantage, the subject of formula, so we can get the value. Okay, in making this subject of formula, we have what? MA is equal to what e uh, machine efficiency times velocity ratio v 
divided by 100. All right, so we have here 90 times 2 as our velocity ratio divided by what? 100. Okay, this zero will cancel out this zero. 2 can go here 1, and 2 in, in 10 will go 5 times. So our mechanical advantage here is what? 9 over 5. So to get our effort, so to get our effort, our mechanical advantage is equal to what? Load over effort. And making effort subject of formula here, effort will be equal to load over our mechanical advantage, all right? And what is our load here from our question? Our load is what? 120 newtons. Okay, so we have 120 divided by our mechanical advantage, which we got here as what? 9 over 5. Taking 5 up, what do we have? We have 180 times 5 over 9. And 9 will go here one time. 9 in 180 will go 20 times. And we have 20 times 5, which will give us what? 100 newton okay so our effort is what 100 newton and our right option here is option a question 40 of the utme 2018 physics pass question that's your jam 2018 physics exam it says calculate the effective capacitance of the circuit above okay so we're looking at this circuit so let us simplify this all right the first thing we should do is let's try to resolve the the ones in parallel okay so let's split this uh circuit into two now all right, so let's resolve this. And remember to calculate the capacitance of capacitors in parallel. What is the formula you do? What C is equal to what? C1 plus what? C2 plus C3 plus that, 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 that. Okay? So, so remember it is different from your resistors. To calculate resist, uh, the total resistance of a resistors in parallel, remember 1 over R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So don't get confused, all right? So when it comes to the, 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 the turn of calculating uh, the effective capacitance of a parallel circuit, it is what just simply, you simply add them up, all right? So it's, it's the opposite of finding the total resistance of resistors in what parallel, all right? Okay, so from here, in resolving these three capacitors in parallel, we have C is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2. So we have and this will give us what six watts new micro watt farad all right so uh, we now have a simple circuit as this okay where this is six this is two this is what three all right so now this is a series circuit all right a series circuit of uh, capacitors all right so to calculate the total capacitance in a series circuit in this final circuit it will be what one over c is equal to what 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. And what's the LCM of these three digits here? It is what 6. 6 and 6 will give us 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. Plus 2 and 6, how many times 3? 3 times 1 is still 3. Plus 3 and 6, how many times 2? And 2 times 1 is still what 2. So when we add this up, we have 1 plus 3 is what 4. And 4 plus 2 is 6. So we have 6 over 6. And 6 over 6 will give us what 1. So C is equal to what 1. When you invert, it's still what 1. So C is equal to what 1 microfarad. And our right option here is option D. Okay, so thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video. I appreciate and say thanks from DTW Tutorial. So please, all I just need from you is to please share this video. Let it get to as much students as it can to help them prepare in their forthcoming exams. And please say no to exam malpractice, all right? At DTW Tutorials, we've provided several resources that can support you in your education. So you don't need to depend on malpractice. Please close your ears to those people that will say two days before the exam, they will give you answers. Why do you need to need, wait for that? Instead, read and prepare for your exam. Use these videos to prepare, prep yourself for the exams, all right? And I know that if you depend on what you've read and also depend on God, you are destined to win in this forthcoming JAM 2019 exams. All right, thank you for staying tuned. And don't forget, Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ. You are destined to win. Bye.